Hi, it's Angie from Canterbury Trails Farm. Today I'm going to show you how to applique. There are different styles. Uh, there's two that I primarily use. It's just a simple sort of almost like a satin stitch or an applique stitch. And then I also use the all important to me blanket. We're going to look at that here in a minute. Well, I was going to show you some little lovely things I got recently from a lot on eBay that I got. And these are, I, I like to purchase like big lots of linen, like uh, huck towels and tea towels and stuff. And I use those actually for dish towels because I like pretties. And uh, this one was gorgeous. And you remember I do a lot of sewing for Shirley Temple dolls and other uh, antique dolls and uh, the bluettes. My, I have reproduction French bluettes. They're not real. I mean, they're not, they're real. That's not the correct word. They aren't actual antiques because the actual bluette dolls cost thousands of dollars. But anyway, so I like to sew and I find these beautiful antique tea towels and hankies are usually lovely fabric for making dog clothes. <laughs> anyway, this one is gorgeous and it's probably going to end up as a doll dress. I was really tempted to keep it for um, the dish towel, but it just has this lovely open work. And I just, the blue, it just would like make a really pretty, pretty doll dress. So, so there was that really pretty piece. This I can totally see um, doll, like a chemise or a petticoat. It's really pretty. I don't think this is a tea towel. I think this is more like a placement or a dresser scarf, but it has this gorgeous work on it and it also has this just this I think it's the color of this natural fiber but it just makes it look like it's really aged and it's just really pretty but it, anyway so that's definitely probably going to be some adults underwear now I have these two and I think these are dinner napkins but they had them listed as tea towels in this lot but they are shaped like a tea towel they could have been guest towels like little hand towels but again, since these are so gorgeous, these are probably going to end up being doll bed sheets. Is probably what these are going to end up being. But I got two of those that were matching, so those were really pretty. I liked those. The lot was much bigger than this. I took out the ones, the big ones, the huck huck toweling that I'm going to actually use. They were pretty too. They were a bunch of embroidered ones, but these are the the daintier ones that I pulled out to use for sewing purposes. And this was like, had like a little like Japanese bridge on it and little flower sprigs. It's just real pretty, just a simple thing that would will probably end up being a skirt to a doll dress or I don't know, we'll see. You know, I buy these little things and I have little piles of them in my arm, my sewing armoire and some of them don't get used for years and then I pull them out, you know, I have had things that I've had for 10 years and then the right project comes along and I'm like, oh, and I pull it out and I'm ready to go. So you never know what you're going to use them for. This one was a pretty one too. It's just a gray one. Thing is, with these these kind of things, what I do with the skirts, I like to do aprons and layer and stuff for my doll dresses. Now these two, I am probably, I, I'm not going to make doll clothes out of these. These are, these are appliqued, but these are done in like a, it's almost like an invisible applique stitch. You don't actually see the applique. It's all along the edges, so it's not a visible. I mean, it's gorgeous. I love it. It's not the kind we're going to do today, though. This was very well done, and they were matching. They were like little... I think they're either supposed to be Amish or Dutch. I think they're Dutch. But it's pretty, but... So, I'm probably not going to do doll clothes out of these, but I don't know what I'm going to use them for. I mean, it could very well, since I have a matching set someday, end up as some sort of, you know, if you put them together, it could end up as some sort of, you know, wall, wall art. I don't know, you know, they're really cute. But anyway, so those definitely went on my little pile, just in the fact that they were cute. They're very well Applique. You can barely even see the stitches on the back. It's this invisible sort of applique. I don't even see basting stitches. It's, it's so well done. But very dainty. 
and obviously they didn't get used because <laughs> they're both like brand new so whoever they were given to as a gift probably thought they were too gorgeous to use as well uh, now I do see on this one there was had been stitching up the middle so either this didn't have the stitching or it did and it's come out one or the other but very finely done very very beautiful work because there's embroidery on here as well as the uh, applique but I don't know what I'm going to do with those yet but I know I'm not using them for towels I know that so I'm putting those over there and this one was pretty and I had my doubts if this one was hand done at first it's a cross stitch very small but very finely done very pretty and this I could see this easily becoming since there's like it's done like in three sections I can very easily see this being a um, a doll pillow case would be really pretty so we'll see you know I'm, I'm working the bluettes are 10 inches tall so I work in a very small scale there those were my some of my little treasures that I've gotten recently all right so let's get to the applique here so let's look at this one it's what this is is a vintage baby crib pillowcase and flat sheet set here's the one, we're gonna get to that so I've done the embroidery and applique on the pillowcase I didn't know if I was just going to do a very pretty like variegated pink blanket stitch on the edges or if I wanted to use lace I had this gorgeous vintage lace and it's sort of small and I was just we just gotta do the edges of the pillow to begin with and then I was going to do like embroidery stitching over the top but as always happens when I have small lace like this I'm I, it's really hard for me to use it on anything that isn't dull oriented because it is a small scale lace and it's difficult sometimes to find the small scale laces especially I love pink so my bluettes and for the Shirley Temples so when I use it it's like you know because I'm afraid that I can find the larger scale laces easier than I can find these smaller scale so when I find the smaller scale I tend to sort of hoard them for my doll making stuff and they do get used but in the fact they usually get used pretty fast and then I also toyed with the idea of doing like a double lace sort of thing but I next to that idea so I had this lovely big amount a large amount of yardage of this double flat crocheted lace and this is machine done so it's vintage but it's not like hand done or anything so this is there's a good chance that this is hand done it could also have been machine done as the industrial age went on and through the 20s and the 30s more machinery was invented in looms and and they weren't computerized of course but they were machines that started being able to mimic the effect of hand crafted items and so this could be machine it I think it's probably a better chance that this is hand done though but this is definitely on the machine and you see this is a, this is a common lace that you'll find and sometimes it's just half in fact most of the time it's half to find it in this large double sort of style with the white in the middle and the two tones of pink was a little bit unusual I don't usually see that when I usually find them when I find this flat lace it's usually ecru or, or an ivory color sometimes it's white but I don't really generally find it colored and then to have the three tone was quite the find and I got this for almost next to nothing because when I got it it was pretty well soiled um, so what I did is I soaked it and then I just let it air dry I had it draped all over the place it looked like a spider web of lace and then I ironed it so it it's really nice like I said before in some of my other videos this antique type vintage lace crocheted lace is almost virtually indestructible you can bleach some of it I mean I don't go run out and bleach all your stuff but what I like to do is if something needs bleach 
I will first drop in, um, um, I'll just get like a stainless bowl with hot water and I'll put in a dishwashing detergent tab, just drop it in there and then just put my stuff and let it dissolve. And that usually takes care of it. I don't have to use bleach bleach. But on the few occasions where I have had to bleach, if I'm doing lace, I'll put it in a lingerie bag or I'll just soak it. That's usually what I'll do is soak it. Um, unless it's just, you know, some, I've done doll clothes and antiques and everything. I don't spend enough on things. Like, I'm not spending like $100 on an item. I'm talking, you know, on a single item, probably the most I would spend would be $20. That's probably a high amount of money. I think I probably paid about $6 for this. That's usually where my thing is there. So, you know, if it, something goes awry and it falls apart or something, I haven't lost a ton of money. I'm usually really sad, but it doesn't happen that often because, like I said, these laces are so completely indestructible. I already did the embroidery on this little uh, pillowcase. And so a lot of these sets you find on eBay and in flea markets, a lot of women would buy these. Sometimes it was just they'd make the sheet sets. This one actually looks like someone made it, the, the sheets and the pillowcase sets. And then they would do their transfers. And then for whatever reason, they never got finished. A lot of times, you know, life gets in the way. And so you find these pristine sets that have never been done. This one was stamped and ready to go. Just no one ever finished it. So I come along and I buy these things and I finish them. Anyway, so I did my embroidery and it's just, just little angels. And I don't know why, but this angel has a halo and the angels on the sheet don't. So I will probably add halos to the ones on the sheets just because I like to keep things consistent. And I did my applique out of fabric. Now, I, I did film me doing the applique and I didn't have the camera turned on. So, <laughs> I was very upset. But let me tell you what I did. Let me explain it to you. So, we had a transfer. It was just the little angel underneath. And I took, because I don't have a light table. So, I stretched this. I took my cover off of my ironing board and you know most ironing boards are made out of metal with little holes in them some of them are mine is and then I took a I laid the sheet or and the pillowcase on the top of the ironing board and then I sh did a flashlight underneath so the light shone up and so I could see all the lines really good then I just took a, a thin piece of paper or, and put it over the top and lightly with the pencil I just traced the place where I needed to do the applique and then obviously I turned off my light and then I cut out the applique pattern out of the paper. And then I had fabric that I chose to use for the little clothes on the angels. And I knew I wanted to do pink because I knew this looked girly. So then I just used the pattern to, and I and for the pattern for the arm, I traced the existing arm because it just looked like there should be another arm on top. Obviously, if I'm looking this way, there should be an arm there. So. I cut out my pieces, put them on, and then I ironed it. And so what I'm, what I did next. So that's how I, I got the used the pattern to make the pieces. Then I went through and just, and I'm going to show you on this one, did basting stitches. So for the basting stitches, I'm just going to do a single strand of white thread. Have it on a regular embroidery hoop. So I just want to do light little stitches so I'm just gonna go around and I'm just going to do just on the top there's other ways you can you can snag it from the underneath if you want to because this is going to get covered up with embroidery stitches when we looked at the, the Dutch girl and boy ones, that was an a, a, a example of the nearly invisible basting stitches that's done from the underside and from the side of the fabric. I'm just doing it on top of the fabric because the only function this is serving is to hold my little pieces of angel clothes, the little fabric, to my sheet so I can go do applique stitches on top. So this basting stitch is not a is not you know intended to be the uh, focus or by any means. I mean, you could even remove the basting stitches if you wanted to, but they're going to be completely covered up by the decorative applique stitch that I'm going to do. I'm going to take. You 
you can easily make your own pattern for applique that um, just by using any embroidery transfer and just selecting the part of the image that you want to applique fabric onto instead of embroidering. I've seen really cute sort of like the little colonial sunbonnet sue type transfers with just the apron or maybe sometimes just the apron and the bonnet just is embroidered. So you just pick out you know I've seen I've also seen things like uh, just the flowers are appliqued and everything else is embroidered. So you just use your imagination and there are no rights or wrongs and you do what you think looks good. It's much easier not doing this on a flat surface <laughs> trying to be filming it. <laughs> I usually I'm sitting in a chair. Okay. Now I've got the little clothes on. Well, the arm was so tiny that I couldn't do the ironing. Now I need, they do make little tiny irons, but I don't have one. So I'm just going to baste it on the arm without regard to the edges being ironed flat. So I'll have to just really make sure that my applique stitches cover all of that. So you can do it like I'm doing, like I said, I'm sort of doing like a running stitch on top of the fabric. Or you can do the other way I was doing, which is just up and down through the fabric. I'm sort of changing techniques based on where I'm at in the, on the little piece of fabric. Our little angel clothes are now just base stitched on. They're just a nice little tiny stitch. And they're not going to show because they're going to be covered up with the applique. So if we see on this one that's already finished, I had went through and did the same thing underneath there. This one got a little buckled. I had a smaller hoop. I didn't like it. I took it off. I put it on. A, anyway, it was a big to do. Then the fabric started getting buckled because I didn't have it pinned. Can't remember what I did. I, I on this little end or something. I took the pin out and then it got shifted. Anyway, so. To compensate for it, I sort of did a little fold and did a little stitch so I could get away with it right there because it looked like that's where the arm would be on the little girl and so maybe her clothes would be folded. But I wasn't extremely happy with that. But you can see how I've used the variegated embroidery floss and I've gone around and I did the, the blanket stitch and I have a video on that. I use a blanket stitch for all kinds of stuff. I use it loom knitting. I use it when I'm knitting afghans. I use it to do mock crochet lay. You use it in the Amish rag rug. It's just a very versatile stitch that you can use in multiple crafts. It's a macrame stitch, it's a knitting stitch, it's a crochet stitch. So the basic concept of the blanket stitch is you see the little loops so it forms a row on the outside like a outline and the stitches. That's why I like using the blanket stitch as an applique stitch because I tend to get my stitches more even in between each one when I have the row above it and I also just like the way it outlines your picture. So that that is has been already here. done. So now let's in the um, leg hole rather than in one of these little areas because when I get to those little areas I want to make sure I have them covered. Now here is the problem with the whole filming thing. Let me see if I can do this in an upside down sort of way. So you want to do, since I'm doing the blanket stitch, I put my needle up through the fabric and the blanket stitch forms a loop. So what I've done is I've, 
I got this part pulled out here. This is where my loop's going to be. I've slid my needle down under the two layers of fabric and back out to the side. Now I'm going to pull it this way. See, I still have my loop. And I'm inside that loop, and there we go. Now I'm going to come next to it. Do it again. Okay. Really want to go up next to it. Now, in applique, you have like the little uh, tea towels we looked at where the applique stitching was not part of the decor. It was the appliques itself. In this kind of application, the stitch itself is part of what you're doing. So you, the stitch itself is being accentuated as part of the project. Some people will applique their stitches in different resting thread not the same color I tend to when I applique I tend to like to stick with whatever color I'm doing but I have done flowers in on occasion where the applique stitch was a different color on purpose to add a contrast Poopaz. Uh oh. Poopaz sighting. Poopaz, what are you doing? Hey, no, 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 no. Okay. So, the danger of applique with cats is cats want to come. Go on. Go on. Go on, dude. Okay. Now, for the arm here. I'm just going to flip over and you see it's just little dots. I'm going to secure a stitch under a stitch. And then I'm going to go Under the fabric, let's hope it happens here. I'll double check before I pull that all the way out. I want to make sure it didn't come through and it didn't. I'm going to go under the fabric of the white that is making up the arm. And now I'm going to, it's underneath, it's between the sheet and the little arm piece. And between the sheet, and the little clothes piece, and the little arm piece. It's all under there. And then I can pick back up. right here on the other side of the arm so I'm going to do the arm in its own color there so you can see pretty good how it's going there a little bit clunky around here it's not as nice and orderly as my other piece because this whole process of doing it on camera is a little Little. Back to the first stitch. Just put your needle up under and just sort of. I'm just going to join the stitch with my needle. I'll go under here and pull it up. My hoop has gotten completely untaunt here. So here we have the little clothes here. Now, so it turned out pretty good. When you're, when you're done with your applique and you're doing your embroidery, if you notice like a little, I got a little divot right there, a little cotton. You can just 
make a stitch or so, you know, to to cover up anything that you notice when you're doing it. Now let me to see do the arm. I switch to white. I'm going to try to do a little bit deeper stitch on this because you remember we didn't have the little edges ironed down. And you see how I did applique through two layers there. It also just sort of reinforces the little pieces of fabric. All right, I got a little bit of a cotton bit right there that I'm not really pleased with, but I'll fix that when I'm embroidering. So there we have the little clothes and the little arm. And then this will be just like, like this one got embroidered. I'll do the embroidery. And I just use like a simple split stitch. It's sort of a variation on the chain stitch, but you don't see the individual loops. And I'll be doing a separate video on that eventually. But right now we're okay, just doing Okay, so I wanted applique. to get some other examples of applique to show you. I thought this was the other kind, but this is a from a vintage pillowcase that I've made into a child's apron. And this is the same kind of applique that I was doing. Only this is what's called, it's like pieced and then it applique. So it's like cut work. Blue and the pink were laid over the white. And then it was cut out. And then it was applicated and this is all blanket stitching so this is the way that I was doing it. and you can see all this has been blanket stitched so this is my preferred way and obviously it was if anything you have a rough edge like where they did the cut cutting here you would need to do the blanket stitching to cover your edges so that was an example of applique with the blanket stitch like I'm doing this is an excellent example and whoever did this this is masterful as far as I'm concerned. This is all done. This is a baby sheet and has these little Rose O'Neill's cupie dolls and these were done by the uh, Joseph Callis and Rose O'Neill cameo doll company. I used to collect cupie dolls and this is was a transfer pattern that you can still buy and then it's been applicated. So what we have, we have a couple different styles here. So she, the seamstress has First of all, cut out her little baby and a little blue, and she's, by I'm sure, basted. I can see some of the little basting stitches. So she's basted it on there. And then we have these ribbons, very intricate ribbons that go all around on this. You have like the little knot. It's like little ribbons, and they're all along this whole baby sheet here. And so these ribbons have been done with the invisible applique and you can see the stitches are like on the side so they've been worked from under and snatched coming out of each side that is extremely difficult to do and this seamstress was incredibly talented she has done these ribbon works like like i said it's all along on this baby sheet and that is just and you can see the folds and it's been ironed and it's been applique it's just amazing work full beautiful work. And she's done on top of this this one, on top of the blue, she's done, it's hard to see now because it's been ironed and it's older, but this is a blanket stitch applique in here and she's sort of put the um, top part of the blanket stitch down in like the gutter between the blue and the pink so it's it's really tiny. I mean she's just super tiny work. And then on top of that she's done in she has done like a stem stitch all the way around. And what that is, it's when you come up right on the side of it and you snatch a little bit from the side of it. I've never really, I like the way it looks, but for me, the ease of doing it has never been that easy. I prefer to do the split stitch, which like I said, is similar to a chain stitch. A chain stitch is good too, but you see the more of the chain with a split stitch, you're coming up between, you're not emphasizing the chain. And then she's done some more blanket stitching and a combination of stem stitching. And she's done embroidery on there. And so that's just very, very beautiful baby sheet. She's For me, the applique without the blanket stitch when you're just doing the up and down, up and down, has the biggest potential to get uneven and sort of clumpy. And I prefer to use the blanket stitch method for security and it really keeps the little piece of fabric that you're appliquing to the 
other piece of fabric closely stitched and secure. Those are some other kind. Like I said, the most masterful is that invisible applique that we looked at, at the, on the little tea towels with the little Dutch girl and little boy and invisible ribbon work on the cupie baby sheet. It's just amazing. I can do that, but it's very, very time consuming. And I really think that what I am usually sewing are things that I want people to use. I'm very much against folding things up and putting them in linen closets and leaving them for a century and for someone else to come along and then get and fold up and put in their linen closet. Use it. I can't tell you how many, uh, you know, elderly women's houses I've been in. They've had these beautiful things that they tied up in ribbons and never used. What is the point of having a beautiful item if you can't use it? And I use everything. And the saddest thing to me is to find an old lady that has passed away with these beautiful treasures that never saw the light of day since 1952. And no one got to enjoy them. All that work and they weren't enjoyed. I want to make things that I want people to use. So I don't want to invest like, you know, for an inch of applique, you know, five days. So that invisible applique is absolutely extraordinarily gorgeous. It would be used on something like a christening gown or a wedding gown, some sort of apparel or something that is only gonna be worn for a super special occasion. Then I would probably use the invisible. But for baby sheets and baby blankets, things I want to see used, dish towels, I'm going to do the blanket stitch applique. For one, it's functional, it's secure, it's gonna be your strongest method of attaching one piece of fabric to another. It's gonna hold up being washed and used more than that invisible kind and that's why you when you find the invisible that very delicate high quality work you're usually finding it on a practically brand new item because they didn't use it and that's what preserved the, that very delicate work and like i said i want the things i make to be used and loved and enjoyed and they have a purpose and i want to instill beauty in a functional item so this has been the applique, this little angel guy here. Um, it's just, like I said, it's just the blanket stitching. Instead of doing it on an edge, you're doing it on a flat surface and you're just going along and you're sort of outlining in the other fabric on top of this fabric. I'll put the link to my blanket stitch video. So this has been Angie from Canterbury Trails Farm. Thanks for joining us.